I'd like to know how you exercised your brain to, to change it. I exercise my brain every day because I read, I study uh, continually. If you were to ask my wife, uh, I'm, uh, I'm usually uh, got about anywhere from 30 to 50 books going at once. And uh, I, I study history because the thing that we learn from history is we don't learn from history. I also study economics. I also study theology, I study behavioural science, and uh, I also study economics and politics. If you don't study those, you won't get around education. Look, that'll be enough, gentlemen, I can fix that. Uh, can you just hang on for a second? Just stay right there and I'll finish this off. Okay, that'll be fine, that's all I need. Let's show you how to do the goals. The people that are standing up, you stay there for a minute. Goals, okay? One, define your goal. This is a formula. If you haven't got a goal, make finding a goal your goal. Now you've got it. <laughs> Two, set out your strategy. Plans in progress mean power. I'm talking about a simple step-by-step -step movement towards your goal. Thirdly, plan out your problems. Everywhere I go, people tell me about their problems. I was, in, I was in Chicago and a young man told me about his problems and he said, you know, my father has the same problem too. It's funny, isn't it? No, it's stupid. We can solve our problems. My Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Make a date that you're going to get that problem of being bad-tempered uh, or uh, being bad-mannered or whatever. Uh, make a date to get it out of the way. Fourthly, build in reserves. This is a protectionist role. Now I thank God that a man for 15 years, for two and a half hours, every Saturday morning on my knees taught me Bible and faith and prayer. Because sometimes it's uphill all the way and nothing makes any sense anymore and you need a vertical relationship with the Saviour. Get to the Bible studies, whatever you do. Ask the awkward questions. Challenge the statements they make. And learn Bible. Have spiritual reserves. Go to the prayer meetings. Make sure that you read your Bible every day. Also, keep yourself fit. I hope you can see at 73 years of age, you'll need a gun, a whip and a chair to handle me. I still ride horses, I punch punching bags, I swim, I run. Uh, you've got to keep yourself fit. Thirdly, make sure that you build a reserve of friendship. Be kind to people. It's something that's missing. We look around at church every Sunday and we look for someone who's doing it rough and we take them out to lunch and just give them a real good time. Be kind to people. Also, you need financial reserves. Fellas, give your wives some financial security. Am I right, ladies? Yes. Did you hear that, fellas? Did you hear that? Now, how much is enough for a woman? Just a little bit more. <laughs> but, but you have to... Listen, women need financial security, fellas. Wake up. Wake up. They need that. Now, also, you need some mental reserves. I mean, trying to get you to do... Thank God that, uh, that this ministry encourages you to spend some money on your brains. As not many ministries do that. Spend money on your brains. It's the only thing they cannot take from you. And make sure you've got some, some mental reserves. Okay, so build in reserves. Fifthly, relate to time frames. Time frames. Time is an opportunity looking for a cause. Time is God's rare gift of unpurchable power. Time is a given distance between failure and success. You look at where you want to be in 20, 30, 40 years time, you come back in bite-sized chunks to where you are today. The book of Ecclesiastes said there's a time for every purpose under heaven. The great literary classic, The Tale of Two Cities, says it's the best of times, it was the worst of times. Time, not money, is your most valuable commodity that you have. You can make more money, you cannot make one more moment of time. Six, 
create a master plan to get the job done. And seven, action today. I don't care how old you are or how young you are, you can make a decision today to start setting a plan for your life. At 26 years of age, when I wrote everything I wanted to have done by my 85th birthday on the back of a cereal package, I still have it in my wallet today. You can make a plan and you can stick to the plan. It must be expandable because you're going to be an entirely different person 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years from now. Make sure you're going to grow with the plan.